Welcome to another Biomania question of the day. This one's about cancer drugs and cell proliferation. Dakey Bio Review. So what I want you to do is I want you to carefully read all of this text and then I want you to think about your answers but don't answer them yet. So pause, read, and think. Critical reading is one of the most important skills that you can bring to the AP Bio exam. There's going to be a lot of complex text and you're going to have to derive the underlying meaning from that text. So this is an excerpt of what you just read and I want you to think about four things. I've listed the four substances in these paragraphs and what I want you to do is think about each substance's effect on cancer. Does it increase it or decrease it? I want you to write out those answers and then I'll tell you what they are in just a moment. Let's start with protein X. Protein X comes about when this cell gets transformed by a lysogenic virus. And then it tells you directly that protein X increases cellular proliferation. So what's protein X's effect gonna be? It's gonna increase cellular proliferation. It's gonna lead to an increased amount of cancer. What about compound P? So compound P is in the second paragraph, and it tells you that compound P is known to increase the level of tumor suppressor proteins. And it tells you that tumor suppressor proteins prevent cells from becoming cancerous. So compound P is going to decrease cell proliferation. Now let's talk about protein Z. Protein Z is capable of binding to X and rendering it inactive. Now, if X increases cell proliferation and protein Z binds to X and makes it inactive, then protein Z's effect on cell proliferation will be to decrease it. It's basically interfering with something that stimulates cancer, which means it's going to have a, a negative effect. Finally, compound Q. Compound Q helps stimulate protein Z. So a protein Z decreases cell proliferation and compound Q stimulates protein Z, then it's also going to decrease cellular proliferation. Now our job is to look at a series of graphs and identify which one correctly represents the mode of action of P and Q on cellular proliferation. Let's talk about what's going on on this page first of all. The material on the left is just a review of what we just did. On the right we have these graphs. The y-axis on these graphs is the percentage of cell proliferation. There's no units on this, but basically it's is there more or is there less. Um, if there's a minus sign next to the row that follows P, that means that compound P isn't present. If there's a plus sign, then that means that compound P is present. And it's the same thing, of course, for Q. So let's look at these four graphs and let's think about what they're saying and see if they can accord or don't accord with the material on the left. So first of all, let's look at graph A. Graph A is saying that when P and Q are absent, then the level of cellular proliferation is at some particular level. So that's sort of our starting point. And in a sense, that leftmost bar, that's our control because that's when these substances aren't there. Now, the second bar says when P is present and Q is absent, the, the amount of cellular proliferation is the same as it would be in the control. And that doesn't make sense because we know that compound P should be decreasing cell proliferation cancer. So already that one looks a little fishy. Now let's look at the third bar. The third bar is saying that when Q is present and P is absent, there's also no effect compared to the control. Well, that also doesn't make sense. And finally, on the right, when they're both present, no effect compared to the control. We're going to knock this one out. Now, let's look at the second one. Um, in B, we have our control on the left, some arbitrary amount of cellular proliferation. In the second bar, it's saying that when P is present and Q is absent, cell proliferation goes down. That's good. That makes sense. In the third bar, it says when Q is absent, uh, excuse me, when P is absent and Q is present, then cellular, cellular proliferation goes down. That also makes sense. But then when both are present in that fourth bar, 
cellular proliferation is the same as it is in the control. Doesn't make sense. Let's drop that one. Okay, now let's look at C. Leftmost bar, again, is the control. The second bar is showing when P is present, Q is absent, cell proliferation goes down. The third bar shows when Q is present, P is absent, cell proliferation goes down. And finally, the rightmost bar, it shows when both of them are together present, cellular proliferation goes down the most. That looks like it's the winner. That one makes sense. And then finally, just to check ourselves, let's look at D. And D just really doesn't make sense. We have our control, and then the second bar doesn't make sense because P is present, no effect compared with the control. The third bar is okay, but then the fourth bar shows both of them present and no effect. We're gonna knock out D. So we've made a choice about which one's correct. That's fantastic. Now we have to do what you're always gonna have to do in these AP Bio questions, which is justify your response. So what I put here just for review is on the left side, there's the effect of each compound. On our right side, that's the decision we made about the graph. And what I've done in the lower part that's shaded in is I've given you a sentence frame. So pause the video, think about what words would make sense in each one of those blanks. I'll come back in a moment, I'll show you what they are, and then we'll talk about how to wrap this up. P increases tumor suppressor proteins, which would decrease cell proliferation. Q indirectly inactivates X. Because X increases cell proliferation, inactivating X, which is what substance Q does, should decrease cellular proliferation. Therefore, a combination of P and Q should lead to the lowest amount of cellular proliferation, which is exactly what's shown in the last bar of graph C. P and Q used separately should also decrease cell proliferation, which is what's shown in the second and third bars of graph C. Absence of both substances would lead to an increase in cellular proliferation, which is what's shown in the first bar of graph C, which is essentially the control group. So now what your job is, is to pull this all together. Now, this might seem like it's not necessary. After all, we've just gone over it. But what mastery is about is about perfect practice. So what I want you to do is reread the question and then write out your own answer. Now, of course, you're going to remember a lot of it, but the main thing is to construct your own justification. So pause, go ahead, write it out, see what you come up with, and then evaluate how you did based on the material in the previous pages. Go ahead and do that. Okay, great job. I want you to keep practicing. Keep practicing those college board questions and then practice the material on my Biomania AP Bio exam preparation system. Again, you can do it on the website or you can do it on the app. You got this. Keep on practicing. I will see you at the next video. Thank you so much. AP Bio Review.